Thank you for tuning in to Channel 5. My name is David Howe. And I'm Julia McCurry. We're both seniors here at Folsom High School, Class of 2016. We are going to show you through this news clip the best aspects of Folsom High School. The first segment we have for you today is the physics program that we have here at Folsom High. Interviewed by Dalton. So, why do you think physics is an important class to take? I think physics is a very important class to take because it's applied math, it is problem solving, and the kid that comes out of my class is a good problem solver. They, they learn the skills, they struggle, they get pushed, they come out of here and they really learn, how, they can see a word problem or any sort of problem after my class and have a really good chance of solving it with the skills they, they get from me. Okay. And what would you say to the students who think that your class would be too rigorous? Well, that's part of the reason why I have my no failure policy. You know, the ABC is not ready. Um, it is, well, physics is, first of all, not an easy subject to begin with before I even got involved with it. And plus, I want my students to be prepared when they move on to the next level because this, you know, school is a factor. You guys are a product. And I want my product to be very, very good, be very competitive when you move on to the next level. Um, that's, you know, and again, that's, some days you have bad days. Sometimes kids struggle with the material, and I mean that's why I allow retakes. You know, to prove that you learn the material, take ownership of the material. Okay. So, what would you say is like the best part, the highlights of of the physics? Uh, the projects that you get to come up with, and the imagination and the articulation. How well you explain it, like the engineering challenge. You know how articulate all of you were with all the visiting judges and how creative and just mind-blowing high quality work that you come up with. The regatta makes me smile and laugh and just at how silly and how much fun that school can be. It's really that hear one, do one, hear one, see one, do one philosophy of school like the, what I like is just the way school is supposed to be. So. Let's talk about uh, your, your whole philosophy. Why did you decide to come to Folsom High School and teach? Uh, I was teaching down in Monterey County, and I was coming up here to kayak and raft and run rivers, and I met a vice principal here that lived up in Coloma, and she told me about a job position here, and uh, I got hired here 10 years ago. I've been teaching for 18 years now, and then I started teaching chemistry and biology here, and then Paul Richards, the principal at the time, volunteered me for physics as you're going to take over the physics program and then Catherine Allman volunteered me six years ago to take over the engineering program and it's just been being able to create something really successful. Awesome. And finally what would you say to students who are interested in taking your class they want to know? Uh, it is fun but challenging. Uh, you'll be pushed out of your comfort zone like Ferris and um, Dalton, you know, um, but you're going to come out of here way prepared. Um, you're going to be learning a lot of things that you, life lessons. So it's not just the applied math. I mean, last year's graduating class, we had 70 kids out of last year's graduating class that started off with engineering majors uh, this fall. Um, of the, we had 15 kids finish our engineering pathway, triple the number we've ever had before. And it's, seeing those kind of results is really exciting. Awesome. Welcome back. Thanks, Dalton, for interviewing Mr. Wright. The boat regatta and the engineering challenge are one of the highlights of the physics projects and the engineering department at Wilson High School. And now we'll join Nikki. She's with one of the best jazz programs in the nation, overall jazz music and choir here at Wilson High School. from Folsom High School Jazz Band. He's a trumpet player. Anish, how long have you been playing for Jazz Band? 
I've been playing since the seventh grade, so it's been five years now. How much dedication has gone into the music program for you? It's actually it's actually been a lot. You know, since seventh grade, it's been a lot of practice, daily practice every day. You know, especially practice on the weekends. I had requires at least a couple hours of that, and it's a lot of time taken away from like academics. So like grades have gone down a little bit for this, but I think it's worth it in the end. So you just recently had your last jazz concert. Um, that was probably a bittersweet moment for you. Can you talk about that a little bit? It was, it was like half like sad and half right, bittersweet because mainly because it's been something I've been doing for six years now since seventh grade. And also the fact that like I made so many friends, like lifelong friends through this program because you get so close with everyone. Like, through jazz trips to like going to trips all the way down like San Diego, all the way in Kentucky, you know, you bond with so many people and this kind of symbolized like the end of that. Yeah, you know, this year has been pretty sad. What was your favorite part about being in jazz band? Other than making lots of friends, like I said before, there's also just learning not only like how to become a better musician, but it was also more about like being a more responsible person. You know, people think being a part of this music program you, it's for really good musicians. It's not necessarily like that at all, you know. It's more about being like, you learn a lot of responsibility. You learn how to take care of yourself. You learn how to be an independent person through music. And that's honestly the bigger thing that I took away from being part of this, part of this program. Yeah, you definitely get a lot of music insight, especially with such a great director like Mr. Gazer, but it's more of like the other things that like help that is a bigger takeaway, especially for the future, after high school. And there are going to be a lot of new incoming jazz players next year. What would you advise them? What should they expect from this program? Okay, so for me, when I went in, I was just assuming that it was just going to be a rigorous thing. Because of how well-known this music program is, it's been nationally renowned um, for being like successful. I was going into it with the impression that it would just be like just a rigorous program to be a part of, you know. But you can also expect to see um, a lot of laughs, you know, a lot of a lot of yelling, you know, a lot of like there's frustration. A lot of frustration for sure. You know, it's just many different things that it's honestly just like a normal class, you know, with the exception of homework in that there's a lot of things to be stressed out about in this class, especially if you have like a festival coming up. He's gonna go into a major, you know, <laughs> jerk mode, you know? And that's expected, you know? Any teacher is gonna be in a stressful mode if something important is coming up. And so he's definitely like that, and that makes all the students really competitive. The thing that's made this program so like successful is because um, all the students in it are really competitive. And they're all, they all really want to be better musicians and better people. And as a result, it can be a stressful environment at times. So students should just learn like not to be let down, especially as freshmen, because you can go into it with such like low, with like not as high self-esteem as you would if you're like a senior in this program. And they need to learn like not to get let down too easily if gazer is too hard on them or if like the students around them are hard on them. Because like you do get, an, it is, it's not just like a freshman class in one class or like sophomores in one class, like we have freshmen in our band and we have seniors in our band, like it's, it ranges depending on like how talented you are musically and freshmen need to know like not to be let down by seniors who want to be really competitive because so many things can happen through the course of the year and it makes better people with a competitive environment like that. So. Wow. And so lastly, can you tell us your favorite festival? My favorite festival would probably have to be when we went to Louisville, Kentucky in January of this year. It was my favorite because, well one, I like airports, so we kind of go there. Um, another thing is because, because of how long the flight was, it was a seven hour flight, along with like a 30 minute flight or bus ride to the airport and an hour flight bus ride from the airport to our hotel. Yeah, you, know, you, you really, it's really through those things, not necessarily the actual, like, music part of the program, where you 
get to know like your surrounding people because I said before like it's really competitive and you never get to actually like know the people that you're with until you get on these trips and it was fun listening to all these professionals from around the world because that was like a conference actually <laughs> um, <laughs> spider web on <laughs> so like at that festival too there's a lot of different there's a lot of professionals from around the world who you hear on like Spotify or on you know, YouTube and to actually see those see those people in person and to see it with like friends who you really enjoy being with it they made for a really fun four days so. amazing all right looking sexy out there Nikki and now on to our next segment our next segment is Speech and Debate, in particular Speech 2, one of the best classes by far on campus because you get to spend time with the Cal Poly graduate, Susan Sturdy Posner. So what have you learned since taking Speech and Debate? Well, uh, when I, when I, when I, uh, taking Speech and Debate, I have learned a lot about <laughs> reducing my, uh, non-fluencies and, uh, I also helped improve my, uh, speech giving skills in front of a, uh, an audience and uh, yeah sounds about right. Your favorite topic you covered in speech too? Uh, probably the two I really enjoyed were the debates and the mock trials because not every day or in any class you get to do a debate or especially the mock trial which I, I thought was very fun and very intriguing and yeah it was good good experience. What advice would you give to students considering taking speech and debate too? Oh, uh, for uh, new new students, uh, I think that they should definitely uh, work on their non fluencies because, uh, like, because Miss Posner, she she like uh, counts it a lot, and uh, it it's pretty annoying too. Yeah, uh, it's, I mean, that, I think that's the number one thing I would uh, give to uh, many students, future students. That is. Good response. Tip number one, if you have to go pee in the school, the office bathrooms are the best. Also, bathrooms in the theater are good too, although they smell kind of bad sometimes. <laughs> Jake, how would you rate your pee in that bathroom versus other bathrooms at our school? Actually, I blew my nose in there. <laughs> okay, that's, so you would say, would you, would you blow your nose in other bathrooms? No. Okay, because those ones are gross, right? Yeah. That's good, that's good. Thanks, Jake. Sorry to put you on the spot. Tired of that nasty fountain water that you get around school? Come to the kitchen and you can find some great water. It causes a traffic jam, and some people actually need to get to class. Out of my way, please. You're so rude. What's your problem? If you ever feel like you need help from somebody but don't know where to go, the counselor's office is your best bet. If you don't know where it is, follow me, I'll show you. This is the counselor's office. And as you can see, there are many counselors here, and it's organized by your last name. So if you ever need help with your counselor or what classes to take or if you don't know where you want to go for college, you can always come here and get some help. And, yeah. For the next tip, school lunches. Don't get them. They taste like crap. Here at Student Accounts, you can buy anything that a student needs. You need your yearbooks, you can buy them here. You need tickets for dances, you can get them here. Also, some games are pre-sale. You can also buy your parking permit. But just remember, you need your ID with every purchase you make. Can I purchase a homecoming ticket? Sure. Do you have your ID, please? Oh, I don't have my ID card with me today. Is that a problem? Oh, uh, well, only at Student Accounts, we only do transactions with an ID. You'll have to come back tomorrow. Sometimes freshmen get confused about seeing AC and IB on their transcripts. It's the same building, AC is just downstairs, and the IB building is right above us. Make sure to go out to all the rallies. Don't miss out on the fun. Just walk through these doors and the gym will be on your left. Let's go! Always bring extra change to school in case you run out of lunch and you want a snack. My personal recommendation, 
Use caution when drinking out of the water fountain. Thanks for tuning in to Channel 5 News. We hope that you learned a little bit about Folsom High School. I'm Julia. And I'm David, signing off for the very first and very last time. <laughs> Kota? 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 Where have I learned? I, uh, uh, I learned uh, a lot. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Who cut this? I learned a lot. I can recall of a lifetime rate. The need to get up for it. That worked? Yep. That's perfect. <laughs>